what is essentially is an uncontrollable cost. In other words, um, they get their foundation formula, they go to plan, they put together their budgets, and um, all of a sudden their health care costs are something they, they just can't control. So I think you'll see uh, the Senate and hopefully the House start to have a, a, a larger discussion on the concept of health care, not just for school districts, but across the board. But it really is hurting school districts. Austin? I'll throw to the finance people because they have a closer view on how those bills are being discussed in, in Senate Finance. I would say it's too early to pick which one. It's uh, not unusual for the Senate Finance Committee to um, kind of amalgamate different bills on a on a topic and then come out with uh, a combination of those at the end. Uh, to actually pick one, I, I wouldn't do that right now. But uh, the important thing is that they're all, all three of them and potentially another one uh, to materialize soon. Uh, will be in the Finance Committee at the same time, and, and they can each get uh, equal uh, consideration. So this week, every day but Tuesday, we will be having hearings on all things related to the permanent fund, permanent fund earnings reserve, the dividend, and so forth. We have several bills in play, <clears throat> and during the week, we'll be making the sausage. And on Friday, something will come out. We do know what the um, key framework is. It's something to do with uh, what percentage of market value will we uh, take a look at um, for the POMV. There's been four and a half percent. There's five and a quarter percent. We will look and see what um, what makes sense for our set of circumstances. I do know that a POMV is tried and true. A percent of market value is the method. Uh, mechanism and method that foundations and endowments across the world utilize. It has been tested uh, over time and it works. Um, we also have what's the split going to be between the dividend and um, to help fund state government. And then lastly, with Senate Bill 70, we have a spending cap. So when you combine a POMV, which is a revenue limit, together with a spending cap, it's somewhat of a belt and suspenders and helps keep the growth of uh, government in check over time. Um, I'm a little concerned with um, kind of what we're seeing with the other body at this point. Um, we just want to make sure that we are structured um, with the Senate, with the Senate plan. It's structured, it's predictable, it's sustainable, and that's what we hope to have um, at the end of this week. Thank you. And, I, and I, I opened with a little bit of a discussion, if I could follow up, uh, Austin, and then I'll give you another shot. Um, you know, when we began our conversation a f few minutes ago, uh, we were talking about the fact that many of the plans that we're looking at in the sem Senate have such similarities that they're, uh, I think Senator Dunleavy said there's probably 99 percent agreement on this stuff. Uh, I think no one would disagree with what I'm about to say, which is we need to stabilize the dividend. We need to provide for a reliable dividend into the distant future, and we need to have pressure on government to remain, not to remain, to get small and then remain small through uh, the, the uh, mechanisms that Senator Von Imhoff was saying. Uh, go ahead, Austin. Would you rather see the plan that passes be the Senate Majority Bill, the Senate Majority Permanent Fund Restructure Bill, yeah. or Governor Bill Walker's Permanent Fund Restructure Bill? I, I honestly don't have much of an opinion on that because I don't know if it matters what the bill number is. Almost all the titles are very similar uh, and the substance is what's going to be important. I'm going to leave that discussion up to uh, the co-chairs of finance. They make those decisions for a number of reasons that uh, it would be inappropriate for me to start discussing here. But it, clearly, I ask them about them. They'll they'll talk to you a lot about it. I just don't have uh, any preference myself. I don't know if these these two do or any comments. I, I think again, having them up in finance with five cameras on them and lots of people watching, it's gonna it's gonna uh, cause a robust discussion. Um, just very briefly, the the move that the House did by potentially shifting billions of dollars out of the ERA should be concerning to all of us. And uh, it, certainly, um, it certainly has changed my thinking on some things. And um, that's one of the reasons why we're going to probably add another bill to the mix for the discussion. Um, and that is that for decades, e e we thought the ERA was pretty much protected just because of the understanding we've had with uh, each other and with the uh, different branches of government. But that was changed this past summer with the veto. And now with, with the, um, the move by the House to potentially move billions of dollars out of it, 
um, I think you're going to see um, uh, more of a discussion on how we protect that fund going into the future for future generations. I will say this too: a lot of a lot was made over the fact that I gave SB 71 committee of referral to the finance committee, and I think that one of the press conferences that I was talking to you all, uh, I, I mentioned that was more of a scheduling thing than anything else, and so though I re. Uh, reserve the the right to schedule or, or to refer Senator Dunleavy's bill if he should produce one to any committee I want to. That's the per, that's the uh, responsibility of the president. I'll probably give that one just one committee of referral as well. The only other committee I might refer it to would be State Affairs. And I don't think you want it. So the point is, is we need as many as many bills in Senate Finance as possible as quickly as we can. The discussion will be very uh, detailed and robust, uh, not to overuse that word, in Senate Finance. And keep in mind this, is that last year, the same group of finance members, with uh, the exception of Senator Von Imhoff, uh, spent a lot of time on the dividend through the process where we took the governor's bill, which was really detailed and, and quite complex, and then uh, melded it into SB 128. Our starting point looks more like SB 128 this year, but the fact is, is there are differences between these bills, and we need to make sure they all, all their differences uh, and benefits get examined. Senator Von Amoff. So <clears throat> just on this last point to build upon um, Senators Dunleavy and Kelly is, again, I hope that you all pay attention to what is going on in the other body. Um, I am worried that um, the POMV bill that's being presented there is undisciplined. Uh, the other body, as it stands now, can set the budget really at whatever level they want. The resulting deficit then is swept from the ERA. Um, that happens two or three years in a row, and poof, there goes your dividend. The dividend is at stake in a lot of these plans, and there is a pretty dramatic graph that shows that. We don't have it uh, for distribution yet, but we'll show it to you later. <coughs> and, and I think that another thing that we haven't brought up here uh, in any detail is the Senate's position on an income tax. I tell people, and th at this point this is my opinion. I, th I think many of my colleagues share this opinion, but at this point it's, it's my opinion that the only thing standing between Alaska and an income tax is the Senate. And that's important. It's not just the, 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 the fact that we don't like an income tax, but the, there's a foundational absurdity uh, in the fact that w it, under an income tax what you contemplate is handing a person a check with one hand and taxing them with the other, and that just doesn't make sense. So we, besides the fact that there's some other problems with it too, you got to stand up a, a bureaucracy that probably is somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to 100 jobs. Um, we don't, we don't want to be growing government so that we can tax the producers of Alaska. Yep. My feeling is that income tax is a short-term solution um, with a very long-term negative consequences. Yep. Very difficult on the economy right now too. It, we're in recession. We just, need to, we just need to accept that Alaska's in a recession. You don't increase taxes in a recession. It will just make it more acute. I, I, go I, ahead. I, agree, I agree on the income tax. I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, 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 short-sighted with some serious long-term implica implications, especially for a state like Alaska where you can vote with your feet and move out of the state. And the last thing I think we want to do is give politicians more money to spend. Right. Good point. <clears throat> Liz. Liz, right, this is mm -hmm. to combat Alaska's opioid epidemic. Both the House and the Senate majorities have indicated that this is a priority this session. Um, and now we're more than halfway through. I'm wondering, will we see more of a collaborative effort between the legislature and the governor to come out with some sort of a comprehensive plan? We're, we've seen one bill in the Senate really sure. specifically related to pain, but will there be more of a comprehensive plan that will be emerging? Well, l let me take us back to last year, and, and, and maybe I can answer your question just kind of with a, a, a look at how we schedule things. Uh, last year, we had the Senate had the budget done, the operating budget done, March 14th, historical. Never been anywhere near that early. It's going to be close to that early again this year. Uh, at that time, we should have dealt with the POMV. We should have dealt with the budget. Uh, w within the uh, text of the, one of the POMV bills is the spending cap. That's correct, isn't it? 
Yeah. So we will have dealt with the three things that we have, as the Senate said, were top of the uh, priority list. At around the time we spent, we send out the budget bill over to the House for uh, concurrence, we will pivot to uh, long-term matters, matters, structural issues in the budget, and things like the opioid uh, ep epidemic. It gives us time. It gives uh, it gives us time to concentrate on those things. They're very important. We'll help the governor with this. Obviously, there's going to be some disagreements. Uh, it frees up drafters if they're not working till three o'clock in the morning trying to get POMV bills and budget bill uh, language done. It frees up literally meeting meeting space. You have subcommittees all over this building taking up. Uh, 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 committee rooms and so uh, with that in mind we'll shift to that conversation and, uh, and and we don't have the details of what the governor wants to do but generally speaking the Senate supports uh, m m a move to, to deal with that epidemic it's serious problems and uh, we'll address it was that helpful I, I hope yeah, yeah. New legislation introduced, perhaps uh, in the Senate in, in April. Then, or no, no, it would be in March. Yeah, and I and I would assume I, you know, help me out here. I I don't think there's a, a Senate bill, is there? I think the governor's taking the lead on this particular issue. I mean, it's it's not, it, it's it's nationwide, right? It's 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 statewide, and it's 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 a problem. But I think uh, he's taking the lead on it. It'll be interesting to see what he says today. That'll help us decide what we need to do going forward. But we were just at a, a constituent meeting up in Wasilla. And um, this idea of opiate and drug use as it's related to crime, I think it's a huge issue for all of Alaskans. So we'll see what he says at 11 o'clock, and then we can decide where we're going to go with that. We're almost done. Senator Von Nemhoff? You want to take us out? Okay. Um, I'll just add <laughs> for the last thing with the opiate. I just think, think some of the feedback that we're hearing already is that there's quite a bit being done already in Alaska. So the question is, is, is there a coordinated effort? What's working? What's not? Um, how can we um, get agencies to work together for uh, exchanging information, uh, exchanging resources? So I think that's um, a huge component because if we have a, um, several agencies working in silos, we're doing a disservice to to the to the population here in, in Alaska. Uh, lastly, Daniel, did we have anyone on the phone? Okay. So, I want to make sure everybody got there. Andrew, you didn't ask a question. All right. I feel hurt by that. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for being here. Have a good week.